Hey, Randomosity here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make easy artisan bread. Check it out. Today we're going to change it up a little bit, and I'm going to show you how to make some easy artisan bread. So we'll get right into it. We start out with one and a half cups of warm water. You don't want it lukewarm, you want it hotter than lukewarm. This is to help the yeast um, with its activation process. And I'm using a packet of yeast because that's about the equivalent of a tablespoon which so either you use one packet from the store or you use a tablespoon of just regular baking yeast then it calls for two tablespoons of sweetener I'm going to put one of regular sugar and one tablespoon of molasses. This will give a nice golden hue to the bread and give a slight molasses flavor. You pour those in and mix them up well And now we're going to let it sit for 10 minutes and let the yeast work before we add the next ingredients. The 10 minutes is up and the yeast is developed. So now we're going to add a teaspoon of salt. And as you can see, I left my spoons on the top of the salt box. I do that as a reminder that I have not put the salt in yet. You don't put the salt in first because it harms the yeast's first development. You just let it sit for the 10 minutes with this sweetener and the water. And the yeast eats away on the sweetener and gets all bubbly like this. And then you just add your salt in. Now we have added the salt and you just mix that up thoroughly so it's all... Um, dispersed throughout the liquid and get ready to add flour. Now don't get confused this is flour we're just recycled a oatmeal tub. You use you can just buy bread flour from the store and we will add two cups of flour to the bowl. And we will just whip that up so as not to have any clumps. Now we will add our last cup of flour it calls for three cups of flour and this one's a little bit more tricky because now it's used it up a little bit so you just you're gonna have to mix slower so it doesn't come out of the bowl over everything you just work that flour in now this last cup has been put in we're gonna work it for about roughly five minutes to get the gluten all nice and stringy. It's been about five minutes we've been mixing this and as you can see it's a little bit too gooey still. So don't worry about that even though you've put in all the flour that the recipe calls for 
you can add a smidge more. You don't want to add too much because then it'll make it too stiff of the dough, thus messing up your texture in the bread. So you just add a small amount, work that in. And that touch of flour, as you can see, is already making it much better. It's less sticky. And now we're going to take some flour and spread it out here on the table. Nice thick layer because this is to keep it from sticking. And we're going to just dump the dough right out here onto the flour, right like that. Now, you don't want to knead the bread a ton. This is just, we're going to just knead a tiny bit of flour into it until we get to about the texture we want, you want it nice and soft. But when you let it set, you don't want it to just mushroom out. It'll come out a little bit and then stay. It'll hold its shape. So you just flop it over like this. And it's already feeling really good. And now we're getting a nice soft texture. But as you can see, I let it loose like that, it doesn't just flop out. So now we would just let our dough sit on the flour here for about 30 minutes. That lets your gluten rest. And then we will come back and shape it and get it ready to raise. Okay, we're about 15 minutes into our rest period for the dough. So now it's time to preheat the oven. So we're going to turn that to 450. And we're going to put some water in a very flat pan on the bottom of our stove. This is going to create steam while our bread is baking, making a nice chewy soft crust. Now, this pan looks a little dirty, but all that is is, is minerals from the water. So, because as it steams out, all the minerals will collect on the pan. So your pan will get a little minerally. So that's why I'm using an 80 cent um, disposable aluminum pan from Walmart. So we'll be back when the bread is ready to shape. Okay, our dough has been resting for about 30 minutes now. As you can see, it's, it's very wonderful. So you press on it, and it doesn't just sink in. Right there. It kind of bounces out a little bit. That is a wonderful sign. So now we're going we're gonna to just punch some of this air out of the loaf. And... As it pushes the air out, it shrinks a little bit. We'll just work it around a tiny bit, then we'll fold it into itself like this. Press it together, because you want these flaps of dough to join. So if you press it like that. Then just kind of take it, spin it around on your floured surface like this. Dust off a tiny bit. Now you can do this on any flat sheet. If you have a pizza pan, it would work perfect. But I'm going to use a um, cookie sheet right here. Now give a healthy dose of flour across your pan. This will prevent your bread from sticking as it bakes. 
And you just grab it, slide it right on. Just kind of go around like that to even it out to a round shape. And now we're going to put it to rise. Now that we have our loaf shaped and on the pan, we're going to set it on top of the oven where the heat is radiating out, which will cause the bread to rise better. You want a warm room. If the room is cold, your bread will not rise. It'll flop and have a very dense texture. So we'll leave this to rise for 15 minutes and we'll come back to put it in the oven. Okay, now the bread has been raising for 15 minutes and we're ready to slash the top and put it in the oven. So I start out, I like to have a very sharp knife. This one has a little bit of serration, it's good. And you just pull it through like that, get a nice cut. And then you start out with one and you come the other way, make an X. And then you go and you follow that on both sides, notch it. And then you follow the other line on each side and put two lines beside it. Like that. And now, now we're ready to put it in the oven. Okay, now that we have our design on our loaf and it has risen, we're going to just put it right in the oven. And as you can see, the water for steaming the loaf, you may need to add to it over the bake time. So just check it. But oh, the water that's in there should last for the first 15 minutes of baking. Once it bakes for 15 minutes, we'll turn it down to 350 and let it bake for another 20 minutes. Okay. The bread is done baking now, so we're going to pull it out, just take a couple of hot pads, be very careful because the pan is really hot. I'm going to set that up here. So now that we got our bread out of the oven, we want to get it off the pan as fast as we can. But sometimes it'll be kind of stuck even though you put the flour underneath. <laughs> so, <laughs> just grab a sp spatula and just kind of pull it off like that. Now you want to put it on something like this that's open to let it cool. And um, if you have a wire cooling rack, that is perfect. But since I don't, I'm going to just put it on the trivet on the top of my stove here and we'll just let it cool down. Then once it's cool you can bag it if you like and that'll keep from sweating. As you can see the loaf is cool now and with the cooling of the loaf the crust is softened a bit. Now it depends on how you want to eat it. You can eat it like this and it'll be slightly crusty or <laughs> you can put it in a bag and the, so the crust will soften right up and have this nice, thin, chewy crust. So we'll just cut it right open and see how it looks. <laughs> if you like this video, hit subscribe, hit like, and once this video hits 10 likes, we will put out another one showing how to make a different shape of bread. And so until next time, keep rolling with the random.